Hi friends, this week I'm making a stovetop fan blade from junk. I'm excited, I've made lots of these stovetop fans, but I've never made one of these blades. I've always used the spare part versions of them that I bought. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make that. Now I've no idea if this is going to work, but the impetus for this build came when I found these scraps in the skip. They're in pretty good condition, all things considered, and it's copper and aluminium, and they're one mil thick. I think they should be alright for the aerofoil parts. None of the offcuts are big enough alone though, so we're going to need to make three separate bits and have a central hub to hold them in alignment, at least that's the plan, and that's what I'm starting to make here from this old brass bolt. This 2mm hole in the centre will slide onto the motor shaft and then we'll have some way of retaining it. Got this angled bolt in here. I just need to make sure that this one face here is absolutely flat. Tiniest tweak. That looks good. It's nice and tight in there. So now I need to line everything up. This piece of wood will make a backstop, so the depth of all these cuts will be the same. So when I finally come to put the aerofoil leaves into the hub, they'll go in the same amount and it'll all be even. In case you're wondering, this is just a standard woodworking bandsaw. I say standard, it's been hacked a fair bit. You can check out some of my other videos about that. But there's nothing too special about it. Brass is fairly soft and I'm only doing a few little cuts. Just like the last procedures I did on the lathe, you could do this with hand tools. You could cut these slits with a hacksaw and you could just centre drill the bolt with a pillar drill quite easily. Take two. One thing to note here is that when I turn the bolt to present the next face on the hex head to the blade, I'm actually changing the position sideways because the bolt screws into the little jig I've got. So I do need to adjust the rip fence each time I do this. <laughs> the little M4 grub screw. After centre drilling, cutting the grooves and threading, that thread of the bolt can finally be cut off now. It was quite useful to clamp it in position and hold it. So we're trying HST 2000 aluminium repair rods, second generation. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Um, I'll have a read through this. And give it a go. That's what these little rods look like. So we'll try it on a little scrap of this. Just going into a little notch I've made in this scrap bit of brass. And we'll see where we get with that. I've got my test piece set up here. I've got my map torch. Stainless steel brush. I've given it a clean up. A very small piece of brazing rod. Let's see if I can have more success than last time with this. Obviously because the bolt thread is a lot thicker than the aluminium, I'm focusing most of the heat there. The instructions made it clear that the braze rod needs to be melting on the material itself rather than from the flame of the torch. So you can't have the 
the flame directly over the brazing rod. And the instructions also say that flux is completely unnecessary, but it's good to sort of brush in the braze while it's molten to sort of get a better bond. So that's what I'm doing here. And that's why the brush is quite sort of charred looking. That's from the only other time I've had a go at brazing, which didn't work out so well. I don't know if you can see it, but this section of the corner here started to melt. We'll have to see what we've got when it cools down. So I want to go to about there with the length, so it'll be a bit longer. Only a little bit. I need to sweep back ever so slightly. I bet you could spend a lifetime studying the optimum size and shape and so on for these aerofoils. This design is literally what you just saw me coming up with, They're just comparing it to one that I've got and kind of coming up with a shape that I'd like the look of. Just getting there with a the double sided tape here. Obviously we want the three of them to be just the same, so that's why we're sticking them together before we cut them out. I could cut this out by hand, but I'd much rather use the bandsaw, which means I'm going to have to change the blade, so quick pit stop. Again, if you don't have a bandsaw, then you could probably make short work of this just with a coping saw if you put it in a vise, because the aluminium is so soft and thin. Pretty good. I'll just give it a quick smoothing on a disc sander, I think. And last little deburr of those edges that I couldn't get to with the disc sander. I've been looking at that test joint I did earlier and gotta say it did not work very well. Essentially none of the material went into the joint didn't flow via capillary action. If anyone has successfully used those HTS 2000 brazing rods I would love to hear from you because I don't seem to have very good luck with them. But I'm going to plow on with this anyway. Let's take the leaves apart and see how we go. Well, it will be something of a miracle if I avoid getting braze in the grub screw area. As a last thing before I try this, I just put all the leaves together and made a mark on the top there. Oh, last bit of deburring that I missed somehow. Here's where those little marks come in handy. I'm just measuring the distance between them and making sure it's the same. So essentially it's an equilateral triangle when it's set up properly. Let's try this thing. And as before, it's mainly I need to focus the heat on that bolt hub area. Ooh. So this aluminium can't have a terribly different melting point than the brazing rod, which is quite annoying. On the plus side, two of the leaves I did manage to not melt. And in a semi-miraculous twist, I didn't even get any braise in the grub screw area. Not in. 
I managed to bend back the aerofoil that sagged under the heat and uh, it was very easy to bend. In fact, all of the leaves became very soft after the heating, so I'm guessing I annealed all the sheet aluminium there. Not really ideal, I think. fairly pleased with that. The brazing could have gone a lot better. Um, if I was doing it again I probably would consider using metallized epoxy. I think that would have worked nicely because I could have set it up. I think it's gone slightly off true when I, while I did the brazing. Friends I hope you got something out of that. If you do make one of these let me know how it goes in the comments below. One other improvement might have been if I had a smaller drill bit I think I would have drilled uh, a tighter hole. The fit of the shaft onto the motor is a little bit sloppy. Um, I only had a 2mm drill bit um, and it makes a slightly bigger than 2mm hole so that shaft's a little bit wonky in there. Don't forget to check out the full instructable on builds about this, how to overheat protect and make it levitate up off the worktop, that's in a different video. I really like the shape of these blades, I don't know what you think, but my, my randomly coming up with the shape, I feel like it's worked really well. The angling in the nuts worked quite well too, didn't have to really do any bending.